Hey everyone, it's Josh here, just checking in with you on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, I was just thinking about the fact that it's um, Pump Sunday this weekend and uh, I'm really going to miss uh, being able to see all the little kids dressed up, waving their palm uh, branches around, hearing Joy uh, sing Hosanna and, and seeing her jump around waving a palm branch and trying to work out who is uh, in the back half of the two-person donkey costume. That's, a, that's an annual favourite with me at this time of year. We'll be waving palm branches around, I guess, at home. Cheryl and myself and the kids. I was just looking at the story again from Matthew chapter 21. Um, sometimes called the triumphal entry where Jesus is coming into Jerusalem not long before he's crucified and um, it talks about the people kind of waving palm branches and also putting their cloaks down on the ground uh, so that he can sort of ride over them on that donkey or colt and um, it's a strange story, but there's so much to love about it, the way that Jesus sort of subverts our expectations of what a king should be like coming in so humbly on, um, on anything but a noble steed. A few years ago, as I was trying to understand the passage a little better, um, I noticed a cross-reference uh, from the section where it talks about people, the, the crowd spreading their cloaks on the ground in verse 8 of chapter 21. And the cross-reference took me back to a story in 2 Kings, um, and it's during the time of the prophet Elisha and the wicked king Ahab. And if you know anything about Ahab, part of his problem was that he married a, um, a foreign woman who worshipped foreign gods, and she bought all of that religious junk into Israel. And her name's become a kind of byword for, uh, for evil, I guess, but definitely for idolatry and, and for when things go wrong. Uh, her name's Jezebel. Anyway, in this story, uh, 2 Kings chapter 9, it tells about the, the crowning, the anointing of, of this guy called Jehu, as a sort of prophet king and Elisha tasks him even though he's not really in line to be the king Ahab still ruling Elisha tasks him actually with riding on to to kill Jezebel and it's a really gruesome story um, Elisha anoints him he uh, takes off towards Jezebel and as he gets closer to, to where she um, is ruling from, um, people come out to sort of see whether he comes in peace and he says, get behind me, I don't come in peace. And, and people kind of join his, 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 his crew to go and, and basically kill Jezebel. Uh, and there's a little bit of resistance on the way and, and he, he sort of in a very bloody manner takes care of it. And you might know um, the story about when Jezebel uh, is finally killed, it, it, she gets thrown off the city walls and it says like her blood splattered everywhere and there was dogs licking it. It's really kind of nasty. And not particularly obviously relevant, it would seem, or related to the story of Jesus coming into Jerusalem. Other than this little detail, when Elisha anoints Jehu to be this kind of usurping, rampaging, uh, violently restoring justice type king, um, it says that the crowd there laid their coats on the ground and Jehu rode over them. It just really brings home how much Jesus subverts 
our expectations. And I can't help but wonder if the crowd who were welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem didn't sort of evoke that bloody story. They must have felt like there was so much that was wrong in their world at the time. And they must have felt like their religious leaders and their political leaders were corrupt. And so they kind of may have welcomed the idea of a king who would come in and knock heads, spill blood to set things right. Of course, Jesus didn't come to spill blood. He didn't come to do violence. His entry into Jerusalem led to him having his blood spilled and he didn't take the lives of others, but he had his own life taken. He laid his life down for us. It's a story that just makes me think about the way that Jesus isn't the kind of king that we would expect and he doesn't rule in the way that we would expect. He doesn't rule in the way that we might want. We, like the crowds that welcomed him into Jerusalem, oftentimes we might want blood. (laughs) We, We might want violence. We might want a sort of brute show of strength and and that's not what he does rather he he comes in this gentle way in this self sacrificial way he he's still king he still has it all in hand He's still making the world new again. He's still turning things upside down and setting evil right and relieving pain and bringing an end to suffering. I just feel like that's a great thought at this moment. It might not seem like Jesus is king over the situation uh, in our lives, in the world at the moment. But maybe it's just that he rules in a way that we don't expect. I really want to encourage you that Jesus does have it all in hand. He is Lord over the situations that we're facing. He's Lord over everything that is going on in the world. Continue to trust that he is bringing things to justice, that he is bringing suffering to an end, that he is restoring things. This Sunday, maybe you can fossick some palm leaves from the garden like we're going to at our place. And as you wave them, maybe as you just turn them over in your hand, (laughs) if you're not a palm waver, I'd encourage you to invite Jesus into the situations that you face as king again, knowing that he might not work things in the same way that you would work them. In fact, it might be hard to see how he's ruling in your life in this moment. But I believe that if you acknowledge his kingship, if you acknowledge his authority, his power to do something amazing in your situation, no matter how bleak, that he'll be faithful to that. Just as he went to the cross and achieved such a great victory over sin and death and suffering and all that would stand in our way, all that would come against us. He can do the same today. Hey, um, bless you uh, this week. I hope you're doing well. Bunk it up wherever you are. I'm really looking forward to... uh, to seeing you all in the flesh at some point in the near future, even if you don't have um, palm fronds to wave on our first meeting face-to-face again, uh, I'll be happy to see you. Hey, talk soon. Bye.